Hi everyone, Grant K here from the Smoke Learning Channel. A while ago I introduced a short video series on how to use clip history in Autodesk Smoke. This is the ability for a clip to store all of its settings so that you're able to trace back through the various settings all the way back to the original media. Today's video focuses on how you can take a clip with clip history and extend it in the timeline with a quick keyboard shortcut. Here we have a regular timeline with a few shots. From looking at the edit, you can see that each clip has got 60 frames for the head and tail frames. Let's do some effects work on the second clip. Now the typical workflow for advanced effects would be to match the clip out of the timeline to the desktop using the F keyboard shortcut. On the desktop, the matched clip shows the original footage with the in and out points from the edit. I will go into the Action 3D Compositor to create a composite using the matched clip. In the interests of time, I will click the Load button to the left of the UI and in the File Browser, I will load a pre-made setup. So the footage is stabilized and there is a crash zoom with a lens flare blowing the footage out for extra effect. I would like to point out that the only section we are interested in according to the edit is the content between the in and out points. So bearing this in mind, I will go to the in point in the time bar. This means that when we start processing, Action will process from this frame and ignore everything before which we don't potentially need. To use clip history, you could turn it on permanently in the Preferences menu or simply click the drop down arrow next to the Process button to expose all the processing settings. We will choose Process and Create History. Autodesk Smoke begins to process the Action Composite. Now remember, all we need is the content between the in and out point. So once Smoke has rendered the duration between the in and out point, I will simply click down to stop the render. After all, one would think, why would you need to process frames that you don't need? You can press the exit button to return back to the Smoke desktop. Taking a closer look at the newly processed clip, you can see that it contains a grey H symbol that tells us that history is embedded in this clip. The next step in the workflow is to replace the footage back into the timeline. With the clip selected, change the source area layout from thumbnail to source record view. Press the Replace button between the two viewers to replace the old shot in the timeline with the new one. The in and out points are respected and it should perfectly match frame back into the edit. So here comes the tricky part. You now decide that you want to add dissolves between the cuts. Looking at the timeline, it says you have 60 frame handles on the head and tail of the clip. This is because clip history stores the length of the original composite and not just processed frames. So let's add dissolves on the two edits. Now if you remember, we only rendered the in and out points and did not render the frame handles because we thought we didn't need them at the time. So if we scrub the transitions, you will get frame unrendered messages. If you rendered this, you would probably get black frames. The processed section of the composite needs to be lengthened at the top and tail to give extra processed frames for the dissolve. This is the classical scenario when a producer asks for a few more frames at the end of a clip and you don't have any. So this is where clip history can help us out. Change the record area layout to history view. This shows us the processed history of the selected clip. Double clicking on the action thumbnail will ask us if we want to go into the action with a history setup. Click the confirm button and you will enter action. Now the time bar is very important at this point. 
The markers in the time bar show us where clip history will re-render itself. Even if I was to extend the duration of the composite, the action will only process between the markers. To extend the render region, hold down the keyboard shortcut CTRL and click and drag the markers to extend the range of frames to be processed. This can be done for both the start and end frame. Press return to exit action and clip history will begin to process again. Once the process completes, we will be returned back to the history view. Press F5 on the keyboard to return back to the timeline view. A very important point. Extending the clip through clip history will not ripple your edit. It will simply add the frames to the head and tail of your clip so that things won't be thrown out of sync. Scrubbing the positioner, you can now see that the dissolves have adequate frames for the transitions. If you want to know any more information about Autodesk Smoke, or you'd like to download the free 30-day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash smoke for Mac.